All right, guys, welcome to part three of our Rick and Morty app series. We're going to pick up exactly where we left off. Before we jump into things, drop a like down below, throw a comment down there as well for the YouTube algorithm, and let's continue. So in the last video, we basically went ahead and set up some documentation strings. We also went ahead and talked about source control a little bit. In today's video, we're going to specifically focus on our models. And let me just take a note of the time so we can actually time box this video to something reasonable. So let's open up this models folder that we've previously created. And we have three files in here, a location, a character, and an episode. So for those of you not familiar, a model is basically a data type, an object that represents some data. It could be from an API, it could just be you know, some local object, it could be anything really. So what we really want to do here is fill out the data types for the location, character, and episode objects that we can get back from the API. So here on the API documentation, you'll see under each of these headings for the endpoints, we have something called a scheme. So we have character scheme or schema, I should say, location schema, episode schema. We want to create a object that mimics this. So this is going to be a little tedious to do. Um, so if you actually take a look inside of, well, let's, let's take a step back. So if we click on character schema, we'll see here that it tells us each key so every object has a bunch of properties, the type of that property, and then basically a description of like what the heck that thing is. So in this case, we have an ID, it'll be an integer, and it's the ID of the character. So we could copy and paste this into our code and manually you know, type all these in, but I'm gonna show you guys how to cheat because we're engineers and we do things quickly and we're lazy. So if you come down here, we can see we have a request to get all characters, and it returns to us some JSON here, and if you're not familiar with JSON, it's basically this dictionary type structure which holds a bunch of information. And you'll see here that results is an array where each of these arrays has an object in it. So I'm gonna assume that this represents a single character. So I'm gonna copy that and let's see if it lets me paste. I think we were looking at characters. So I'm gonna paste it right in here. And it looks like this is correct. If we double click that curly, it looks like it's good to go. And what I'm going to create here is a struct with the same name of the class, so rm character. We're going to conform this to codable, which lets us decode data we get back from an API call to this object. So basically decode and uh, deserialize JSON to this native object. And we want to have each of these things in here directly. So Let's see how we can do this efficiently. So I'm gonna show you guys a little, little trick here that we can use to cheat a little bit. And we're gonna copy and paste this into here. And what you're gonna go ahead and do is if you hold option, you'll see you'll get this like cross looking thing. And you can do this thing where you can get multiple cursors. So I can click and drag. And we want each of these to be a let. So you can see that we can quick modify each of those pretty, pretty intelligently and pretty fast. Now we can also see that we wanna do the same thing for here. So let's make this let. So we're essentially just gonna change each of these strings to a native thing. Looks like episode here is an array of strings. So I first wanna go ahead and actually change this. So we're gonna do a command F and paste that, ignoring all these errors for a second. And let me go ahead and just uh, get rid of this for the time being, I'll copy it. And we're going to replace the quotes with a colon with simply a colon. And we're going to hit all here. We'll paste in our JSON again. And we're essentially trying to quickly format all this, all this good stuff. So this first thing up here will be an integer. Looks like this is a string. And we're going to copy and paste this over and over. This will be a string. This will be a string. And I'm kind of just guessing these as I go. And we're going to go back to the schema in a second and look at the type. So it's gender. And origin looks like an object because it's curly. So I'm going to ignore that for a second. Same thing for location. Image looks like a string, um, which is a URL in string format. So I'll grab that. This looks like an array of strings. So I'm going to guess that one as well string and this is a string as well that we are later on going to uh, actually create uh, as a date object so uh, what the heck is this this looks like a character i think i messed that one up this one was a url so let's do that one again so let me actually get rid of this starting quote do this one here as well this will be a string 
this will be a string. Get rid of those trailing commas. Uh, let me also comment this out so it stops yelling at me about the random JSON I pasted in. And let's take care of these origin and location keys. So we're gonna come to here. We'll look at the schema. And let me find them. So we've got type, gender, all right. Origin is an object and it's a name and link to the character's origin. So, okay, so it looks like we can call this an RM origin. So I'm gonna call this an RM origin. And we're gonna create a new file since that's a new data type in our models folder. So I'll create a new Swift file, RM origin. And I'll also say that you can stick all this stuff in one file if you want. It's just far cleaner to do it in separate files for not only readability, but organization as well as testability. So that's the only reason I'm creating multiple files here. So we'll go ahead and once again, format this. So uh, everything that I'm putting a let in front of is basically just a property, particularly a constant. So we'll just go ahead and do that. And once again, do the types. Let's jump back to character. And let's take a look at a location. So we should have a location here, if I could find it. So location, once again, is an object, the name and link to the character's last name, location. So we'll do uh, RM origin. So this one was uh, name and URL. And what we want, looks like this is yelling at me for some reason. Let's compile after I fix the location and make sure it's all okay. Uh, the location here, I'll copy this and make this an RM location. Once again, RM for Rick and Morty. And I'll create a new file here, Swift RM location. And why the heck is it yelling at me? It is yelling at me, ah, because we already have a location. So let's call this RM single location. And the reason we're doing this is because we already have a RM location file, which represents the larger location object. Maybe we'll consolidate them um, if the types are similar. I have a feeling they will be different though. So. There you guys have an example of if you do have um, colliding names of objects with similar um, similar naming conventions, just make the name a little more specific, right? So we know this is a single location with a name and a URL, so we can go ahead and do that. All right, cool. So we've got a couple models defined here. We have those errors that are gone. We have character here. Let's see, is it gonna yell at me? This is an RM single location. Go ahead and do Command B and hopefully all of your errors go away. So cool, so that makes sense. Now let's go ahead and see if all of our types are appropriate. So we have int string, 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 four strings basically. So let's see if they're ordered. So we have an int and four strings. Let's see what gender is, presumably a string as well. So we have gender as a string, an object, another object, we just did those. Another string, this is an array of strings even though it's saying array of URLs, it's in string formats, another string and another string. One thing that I think would be nice to improve is if we go ahead and look at status, we can see the status of the character, it'll either be alive, dead, or unknown. So if you think about it, it is in fact a string, but we can actually represent this a little better, right? We can represent this as probably an enum. So this is for status, right? So let's go ahead and call this rm, character status. And I'm gonna create it down here. I'm gonna delete all this since we're not really using it anymore. We're gonna say struct rm, actually it's gonna be an enum, uh, rm character status. It's going to have a string raw value and be codable. And the types here are going to be alive, dead, and unknown, if I can spell that correctly. Now it's important that you set the raw value to the string that actually gets returned by the API because this is the string that it's gonna match against to try and actually uh, decode the response, the deserialization process. So if we go ahead and compile, you'll see that it's gonna actually yell at me. And the reason it's yelling at me, well, it should yell at me, is this unknown here, we can actually go and put in back ticks, just in case. You can see the color here is different, and that's because unknown in some cases and versions of Swift can in fact be a keyword. So just to avoid any issues with that, you can certainly do that. And like I said earlier, we're gonna be good citizens and organize all of our code. So I am gonna go and create a new file for this, and it's gonna be an RM character status. All right, looking pretty good. Let's come back here and let's see what else we can enumify, basically. So we have status. Can we do species? I guess not, it doesn't really tell us what the exhaustive options are. 
So type here, I guess it doesn't tell us either, but it does tell us gender. So we can certainly do an RM character gender. And I think that's the only one we can change further to a enum, if I'm looking at this correctly. So let's see how we're doing on time. So we're at about 10 minutes in. I guess we can knock through a couple more. So let's do this. We'll create a new file, and this is going to be a rm character gender. Once again, we're going to do enum. That is not how you spell enum. rm character gender. I will paste this on in. Once again, we want this to have a raw value of string. We want it to be codable so we can decode to it. And then we're going to create all of the cases here. So there are a total of four. This will be genderless. And this last one will be unknown. And once again, we are going to add this. We can use multi cursors again to be a little more efficient here. If I can get it to work. There we go. We can paste this on in and we want to make sure that we match the strings so it can in fact decode appropriately. So genderless and looks like unknown is lower cased and that looks like it's good. Let me just check the other enum if I made the unknown lower case. I in fact did so we are looking good. And finally we can replace the gender here to be a rm character gender. So let's compile, looks like we're in good shape. Let me actually build and run, make sure our app is launching, nothing weird is happening, no crashing. We're not really you know, doing much, so everything should be good. We should see our tabs at the bottom that we set up, I think two videos ago. So bear with it here while that runs. Let's go ahead and quickly put together the other ones. So we have RM location. I'm gonna jump into the location schema here. Looks like it's a little smaller. We're gonna do the exact same thing again. I will copy one of these. I'm gonna create a RM location and I'll, I'll call out that I'm using a struct here since it's a value type. You can certainly use a uh, class as well. It's really up to you, but you'll just want to be cognizant of value types and reference types. And if you're not familiar with what that even means, just follow along and use a uh, struct. Make your life easier. So we'll go ahead and fix this. I'm gonna use multi cursors again. So it looks like this thing here is actually going to be an array of strings. So I will do that from the get go. And the rest of these actually look pretty simple. We should be able to do this pretty quick. So I'll make this a let. This will be an integer. And we do wanna actually replace these. So let me get rid of this jazz down here. I'm gonna go ahead and find and replace in this file with a colon. And I, and I realize I'm going through this quickly and that's because I don't wanna bore you guys with something we just went into depth about for the character. We're doing the exact same thing again, but just for a different type. So that should be a location. Let's get rid of these commas. We don't need these. And if you compile, should be in good shape. Beautiful. And let's see the last one and then we'll wrap this up. On a side note, if you guys heard the background noise, it's insanely windy out and raining. So excuse the annoying uh, weather mood today. So that's what that is. So I'll go ahead into episode. I will copy all this and let me make sure that is correct. We will paste this here. I'm going to create once more an RM episode, make it codable so we can decode to it. I will comment this good stuff out. Get rid of those curlies. Get rid of those curlies. By the way, if you highlight and hit Control I, it'll fix all your indentation. That's what I did earlier as well that I forgot to call out. This will be an array of strings. And the rest of these, I think, are just strings. We are going to verify our schema so we don't uh, you know, run into weirdness later on. Let's go ahead and once again replace the quote and a colon with just a colon like that. Let's change all these trailing quotes with a let and a space. And let's do all of the types. So I'll change this here to a string. Let's change this guy to a string. I think that's a string. That looks like a string. String and string compile. Good to go. Let's verify these types. So we've got integer and everything else is a string with the exception of characters. But by looking at characters, it looks like it's an array of URLs in string format. And we also did location. So let me jump back here and just verify all of these. We've got ID, string, 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 array of string, string, string. So those are all of our model types. Now you might be wondering, well, why the heck did we even need to do all of this? Well, when we actually go and 
you know, via our RM service that we briefly wrote some code for in a previous video. And we say, go ahead and ex uh, execute a request. Our requests may very well be, hey, give me a list of characters, right? So when we get a character back, we need a representation of it. And this here will be the representation of it. And very early on, I mentioned we might want to add some searching and filtration capabilities. So for example, let's say we have a list of characters and when we're now going to say, hey, give me all the alive characters or give me all the dead characters. So because we have these properties like character status on this model, we can go ahead and implement some logic in a view model perhaps to go and filter out a array or a collection of these characters. The other thing that I am going to do is, well, perhaps I'll do it on another video. Well, I was gonna go into talking about Hashable and using all of these in a dictionary, but I digress. I will jump into that in a later video. So hopefully that all made sense. We just put together all of our model types by looking at the schema here. Drop a like down below if you haven't done so already. Hit subscribe if you're new here and into iOS. Share the series, share the channel. Appreciate all y'all watching. I will see you in the next part.